here we go with episode two of this attempt to install a J1772 electric vehicle EV plug adapter into a camper van RV for the first time anyone's ever done it in the world. I still haven't done it yet. This is going to be version two of several series over the next week. Now the reason why I'm a little bit slow at talking about this is because this is very abstract, very new, highly technical stuff with a high learning curve I'm still trying to, to uh, deal with. So what has happened over the past couple days, lots of phone calls, lots of time spent talking with owners and technicians at various electrical appliance manufacturing companies and uh, resellers. What we have here is a sewer hose compartment door assembly with a thumb lock. I'm looking at this because in interest because of the thumb lock. For the EV entry port, it doesn't need the lock. Nobody's going to steal anything out of there. I don't want to be fumbling with a key. And I want it white to match my van. So uh, this looks like a good product. There's only one huge problem. The hole is four inches there. And the actual J1772 port uh, adapter is about half that size. Here is the official size. So this is very small. The whole thing is two and three quarter inches, 2.75 inches in all directions. That's that's really small, I think, but it's quite a it sticks out quite a bit, as we'll see here. Um, going back to the box, the depth of the box should just barely clear, but I'm not totally for sure. Here's the actual product I'm ordering. This will be in the body of the van, no problem at all. And then this part here is going to be what it will be in the box. There's two reasons why I'm interested in this box. Because it's white and the OEM original equipment um, here is black. That doesn't match my van. Uh, that's going to be a pretty close fit. Um, now, and the other reason would be to protect it from the weather because the person selling me this said although this has a snapping door it may not seal out the weather completely and those terminals will end up rusting uh, to get this to work uh, since this hole is way too big I would end up cutting another piece of material here plastic or metal uh, probably preferably some thick plastic here and screw it to the um, or glue it or screw it to the inside or outside I'm not sure which would be best I would guess inside and then drill the hole accordingly to the size I need which is looks like just a little over two inches for the EV adapter to fit in there. There's a major change. I'm switching over to this is a like I said this is <laughs> a little slow to talk about because it's so abstract. Uh, this is actually a charger converter and boy did I have to learn a lot of stuff today about this why I'm switching to a charger converter versus what I previously was going to order is a transformer. Apparently a transformer transforms voltage to or from one size to another. For example, 110 to 220 or 220 to 110 step up or step down. Those units are heavier, 
they're not more expensive they're just they seem to be heavier and bulkier and will cause an additional part in my system from the EV charging station to my battery because with a transformer I will have to go from the EV adapter to the transformer and then to the charger and then to the battery so there's going to be some efficiency loss there and more heat building up so uh, what I want to do is and what I recommend for you if you want to do this is get something like this is a two it's a it's a rare uh, 220 volt AC to 12 DC charger converter so apparently a converter is going to differ from a transformer although in my mind the two words sound like they mean the same thing in the world of this uh, apparently they think that a converter is going to take volts AC and convert into volts DC so <clears throat> so apparently um, to repeat again since this is kind of confusing a convert no let me start over a transformer steps up or steps down in the same type of voltage whether it's AC or DC a converter converts AC to DC or DC to AC I think that's correct that's what we're gonna stick with now now some confusing things um, this is a 220 volt AC charger converter the 220 volts AC comes into this black cord you, that my pointer is at uh, that looks like a standard 120 household receptacle type 5-15 uh, uh, technical term for it at 14 gauge uh, that's not really going to handle 220 volts typically but I guess it's going to I don't know uh, I'll find out so the input voltage 210 to 270 volts AC uh, 270 that's really high um, but um, and I found out another thing here I gotta pause and go to my battery is how do you know how many amps of a charger to use with your battery this depends on several things most importantly the manufacturer specifications of the battery you have in my case I have a rare and expensive AGM group super 8d 270 amp hour battery manufactured by master volt it apparently far exceeds standards of other AGM batteries as far as charging maximum charge current is what you're going to look for where my cursor is here for this one 76.5 amps that's very unusually high for this size of a battery um, to, I mean not size of the battery but the uh, amount of amp hours so it doesn't matter how many batteries you have it's how many amp hours your entire battery bank is so if I had two 6 volt 270 amp hour batteries that would still only be 270 amp hours so that would be the same as this one 12 volt 270 amp hours I know that sounds confusing but it's the way it is and uh, that would be a topic of another video explaining what I just said but um, okay so in my case this one battery can handle according to the manufacturer up to 76.5 amps currently my 120 volt AC charger converter is 75 amps DC now I assume they're talking about 76.5 amps DC that certainly can't be AC it has to be DC they should specify you know the more competent I become the more I see 
lots and lots and lots of discrepancies and errors and missing information everywhere I go. Oh, another thing is, you know, you probably run into this when you're shopping on Amazon, whatever. You click, you try to get a close view of the photo. This has been very frustrating to me on choosing a product. You can't see details. It's too blurry. It's too small, pixelated photo. And they only have often just one. You can't see the back. You can't see all the stuff you need to see. And sometimes even on a manufacturer's website, they don't have enough information either. All right. Uh, so still I'm staying with AGM, not upgrading to lithium this year, probably not in 2019 either for several reasons. I'll make another video why I'm staying with AGM, not lithium. Okay, so this means I can go with up to a 75 amp DC charger converter. And so that's why I chose this one. This is perfect. This is 75 amps DC. Uh, well, it may not be perfect because I probably don't want to be maxing out the charging that could cause some boil, some uh, cooking of the battery and drying of the cells. But the manufacturer says it's okay. And since I like a fast charge, this might be just fine for me. See here, maximum AC current 12 amps. So they're saying 12 amps AC equals 75 amps DC. Uh, according to this that does sound right that's that sounds correct so I already have one of these but it's for 120 volts but because of the step 2 chargers charging stations what I mean by step 2 is now that's the current technology the first technology was step 1 meaning 110 to 120 volts AC to charge your car now they doubled that it's uh it's 220 to 240 volts AC uh, to charge the new um, cars now faster, twice as fast. Uh, now that makes things more complicated and more dangerous and expensive and technical. So people installing the charging stations really have to be licensed electricians as with before. Installing 110 wasn't that difficult, but 220 is, is quite a bit uh, more dangerous. So you have to know what you're doing when you're dealing with that much voltage. Uh, that could kill somebody. Uh, so you see, I purchased this December 12th. Now, I'm not going to get it until, uh, according to my um, order details, um, looks like I may not get it till December 19th. I'm going to guess it's going to come... Pro, today, this is December 12th. Uh, I would say it should be getting here around December 18th, but they have up to 24th Christmas. Uh, I don't think it's going to be delivered on the 24th, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, those are some new important things I learned. So, going back to this, how do you determine amps? Well, there's a rule of thumb... Two, there are two rules of thumbs that are general. That means to take the amp hours, in this case 270, and multiply it by 0.1 or 0.2. There's one group of people who say 0.1, so that will mean this should be equated with a, this should be hooked up with a 30 amp maximum charger, 30 amp DC maximum charger. Then there's a whole new group of people or a different group of people who say no 20 percent of the amp hours is okay so in that case the maximum would be about a 50 50 to 60 uh amp dc charger well i'm going to go with the manufacturer the, you know, they should know more than anybody if your manufacturer battery can't provide this information you need to really get it from them somehow Oh, another thing I learned is, uh, with talking to so-called experts, is when something says it's rated for 220 volts, that really means 208 to 240. 
Um, in the case of this charger, that could possibly mean all the way up to 270 and as low as 210. So the industry standard seems to range anywhere from 208 to 240. Here it says 270, but so that might be an exception. I don't know why they, uh, but anyway, uh, so that, so when it says 220 volts, that doesn't mean that it's an exact 220 volts. That just means it can probably handle a range between 208 and 240. Also, what I learned is US 240 is different than European 240 or 230 or 220. They, uh, different appliances will say different things. It'll say usually 220, 230, or 240. Or it'll have a range like this does, 210 to 270. Now, in the U.S., the grounding in neutral is, the polarity is different than in Europe. So they're not really uh, interchangeable or compatible. Uh, so in summary now, what it looks like to get charging from an EV station today, whether it's an RV, camper van, um, not an electric vehicle in this case, because you don't install this in an electric vehicle, they have their own setup. Uh, you need something like uh, what I just mentioned with Tucson EV. That's going to be this guy. And the one that I ordered is actually going to have 10 gauge cable of maybe up to 6 feet. He doesn't know if he has 6 feet in stock. Will not have this yeah, C13 adapter on the end, which would normally go to a transformer, which I backed out of because I'm going to a converter. No transformer. You could do a transformer if you want, but I recommend a converter instead, even if you already have a converter that's 120 volts, you're going to need another one that can handle 240 volts.